Welcome back to BCU Freshman Class Series, where we'll be teaching you the most important building blocks of ham radio and DMR. This freshman series is for those just getting into the hobby for the first time who might not know where to begin. In these videos, we cover broad topics in terms you can understand so that you can start your ham radio journey on a stable foundation. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more instructional content just like this. We really appreciate it. For today's video, we're diving into the world of code plugs. We'll be answering questions like, what is a code plug? What's a CPS? How do I make the darn thing work? By the end of this video, you'll not only know what a code plug is, but how to use one effectively and maybe even build your own if you're feeling ambitious. Now let's get into it. So what is a code plug? A code plug is nothing more than a file with some information that your radio uses in its programming. It helps determine which frequencies the radio tunes into, along with other operating parameters like talk groups, zones, and channels, which help organize your radio. Code plugs are highly customizable files, as you might expect. You have the ability to list your personalized contacts, set up lists of talk groups you want to tune into, and so much more. It can be a bit of a double-edged sword though sometimes. With so much room for customization comes an equal amount of room for errors. We'll get into that in a bit. For now, let's talk about what a code plug actually looks like. So we know it's a file. If you have one yourself, you might have noticed the file type ends with .cps. Let's talk about what that means. To open a code plug, you need a specialized software to view its contents. This software is named CPS or Customer Programming Software. There are many different versions of CPS, so you will want to make sure the version you get is compatible for your radio. You can visit our website at the link in the description, bridgecomsystems.com, to get an updated list of the CPS downloads and make sure you get the one you need for free. Be sure that before you do anything, your radio is plugged into your computer and connected with the software. We have a video in the description where Dwayne N6DMR teaches you every part of the process. So definitely check it out if you have any questions about setup. There are several core areas you will want to focus on depending on what you're looking to do with this code plug. The first thing you should always do no matter what is save a copy to use as a backup. It's a good practice with any kind of technology, but especially in this case. If you enter data incorrectly, it could cause your radio to stop functioning the way it should. In that case, you want to have a backup to restore to. Now there's a lot to take in already, so we'll break it down into pieces that are easier to understand. So let's go ahead and jump into the computer and take a look at a code plug. So I've already imported a brand new fresh code plug that came on the radio. So nothing's changed so far, just like you would receive your radio. And we can see some basic channels in here. You'll probably want to overwrite those. Now, what's a channel? So I'll double click on one here, a blank one. This is where you would add the information for let's say a local repeater or a hotspot. So you would enter your frequencies and then a variety of other information. If you want an in-depth step-by-step tutorial, look at Bridgecom University. We have some in-depth videos that will show you exactly how to do this, but we're just doing an overview today. So then you have your contact. Now this is going to be your talk group. We'll show you where you put those in a second. And this is where you set up each channel. So you'd have a channel for each repeater and then you may have multiple channels for different talk groups on a hotspot. Let's go into the digital section. Inside of digital, we have contact slash talk group. That's what I mentioned earlier. So this is where you will either import a large contact list of different talk groups, a talk group list, or you can just add them individually for different talk groups you want to talk on. This is used for digital radio or DMR. Now, radio ID list up here is also important. This is where you want to enter your name and call sign uh, and then your radio ID into your radio. This will allow your radio to actually work properly on digital networks. Then finally, you have your digital contact list. This is where you'll import most likely the entire digital contact list into your radio. These new radios can support up to 500,000 digital contacts, the UV2+, plus, uh, so you can actually import the whole thing, which is awesome. Now, if we go back up here, uh, channels, we've touched on channels. Now you understand what that contact is for. That's your talk group. And then zones, now what are zones? Zones are basically just a way of organizing channels. Uh, so talk groups go inside of channels and then channels, they're put inside of zones, which are just different folders if you wanna look at it that way to hold your channels. That way, instead of on your radio scrolling through hundreds and hundreds of channels, you simply can select different categories of channels. So we have one zone here. I could create another one, give it a name, 
and then import a few channels into it. Just like that, and I have a new zone. Simple as that. Uh, and that's pretty much all there is to a code plug. You can go a lot more in-depth, a lot of customization, but those are the basics. Now there's another option which has really grown in popularity recently. That will be the Super Code Plug. So it is a pre-built code plug that will save you hours and hours of time. It's got 78 international talk groups, all 50 state talk groups, the 200,000 plus digital contact list pre-built into the code plug. So you can just put it in your radio with a hotspot or even if you're talking on a repeater, a little bit of work, you can put it in your radio and be on the air in no time talking to people around the world. So it's a great option if you don't want to take time to do all of the setup. And if you really want to save yourself some time, we also offer a plug and play package where we will program the radio and the hotspot with the Super Code plug if you opt for that and it will be shipped to you completely ready so there's no setup required. You simply just plug it in and turn on your radio and you are on the air. Building a code plug is one of the more advanced achievements in amateur radio. You can often simply download a preset code plug, but if you're really looking to fully customize your DMR experience, building your own is definitely the way to go. Remember, you can find a list of code plugs on our website here, along with resources to submit your own code plugs to our growing code plug database. We hope this video was helpful to you in your journey to become a true Elmer. We encourage you to check out the links in the description right below this video to find the extra resources you need to get started. There's plenty of great information out there. Thanks again for watching. I'm Cody, W3AMG73.